So this is one of probably the most important videos that we have. I've been meaning to go over these for a while because right now a lot of the test covers what we're going to go over. And I feel like Doppler trips up more people than any of the other subjects just because some of it can be confusing. So hopefully we can provide clarity today. This shouldn't be long. We're going to only go over the parts that you really need to know. I think we get too bogged down with all the information and the technicalities of Doppler. And really, there's just a couple principles you really need to understand. So here we go. So what is Doppler? This is when we have the change in frequency of a wave as you're observing an object as it moves. So if I'm the observer and something is moving, I will notice the change in frequency. Uh, of course, I think the most obvious example that people use is when, let's say, a police car is driving by. It's a, it, The frequency gets higher as it approaches you. As it passes you, it's actually the correct frequency. And then as it drives away, it gets lower. So you'll hear that change in in frequency as it goes by. So the big takeaway, and write this down, is as the source approaches the observer, the frequency is higher. And as it passes or moves away, it's lower. Okay, quick illustration of the Doppler effect. If you have a point that emits sound, it could be anything, it could be tissue, blood, anything you have your point if it is stationary the waves will be concentric kind of like throwing a stone in a pond you just get waves that kind of run out from it where we end up with the Doppler effect is if this sound emitter moves so if it starts moving this direction what we end up with is we have our, our source and it's moving. Our waves are going to bunch up on that, the side that it's moving towards. So you're going to have them really close together on the side that it's moving towards and really far apart. So what our wave will actually look like is we'll have a high frequency here and it'll get lower frequency as it moves away expect you know and and that's in relation to us and we're observing it from from this side so from the observer watching the point move if it's moving towards us we will have a high frequency and behind the emitter is a low frequency so in a nutshell that's the doppler effect so if you imagine these things are in a, in a blood vessel and you have all these little blood cells moving, as they move this direction, it's going to have a high frequency wave this direction, especially if we're, you know, if we're observing from here. And it's going to have a low frequency behind it. So this is how the machine can tell direction of flow. If the high frequency is on this side, it's moving towards the transducer. If the high frequency is on this side, it's moving away. So one thing we always have to know is what the Doppler shift is. What's the difference between the frequency that's on the side moving towards the observer in relation to the frequency that's behind the source. So both sides have a different frequency. One's higher, one's lower. What's the difference between those two? So that in a nutshell, that's what the Doppler shift is. It's a frequency, you know, we transmit, let's say we transmit two megahertz, but we receive three megahertz. It's a higher frequency. So that means it's moving towards us because remember, as it moves towards us, the frequency is going to be higher. And then if we detect a lower frequency, it would be moving away because if we transmit 2 megahertz, but we receive like a 1.5, it 
it's a lower frequency and so that means it's moving away that's all that means so you can know this formula i would just write it down when you sit down for your exam just write it down so that way if there is a question that talks about it you know it but don't worry too much really you just need to know it it's the difference between the transmitted and the received frequency this is a formula that i feel like for people trying to understand doppler get so caught up in the complexity of it that they forget it's all about relationships the main thing we have to you know know about this is just what each of these variables are we don't necessarily need to be able to solve. You're not going to have a math question where you're going, to, you're going to have to solve for the frequency shift. But you are going to have to know if, if I increase my frequency, what happens?